Hello there. We are already up to the finale for season one of Breaking Bad. This is a seven episode season because of a writer's strike. Thank you guys for letting me know that. And it makes me wonder, I think this is the same writer's strike that plagued Transformers Revenge of the Fallen in about 2008, 2009, around that time period. Um, but I still enjoy that movie. Hey, say what you want about it. But yeah, apologies if my voice is gone. Um, it is from the football on the weekend. It was our local derby in the A-League and it was absolutely insane. We won 4-0 against our rivals and it was crazy. That's all I'm going to say. It was crazy. But yeah, we are here for the reaction for the finale of season one of Breaking Bad, which I believe, thanks to you guys, continues into season two seamlessly. This show is absolutely amazing. That's all I'm going to say. I hope you guys are enjoying my breakdown and analysis of each episode. This one is titled A No Rough Stuff Type Deal. Let's see if Walter can continue his relationship with Tuko on good terms. I doubt that. But let's see what's in store for the season finale of Breaking Bad Season 1. Let's go. It's your boy Ellie Moses, your 23-year-old law film shit at different city, Australia. Shooting his shot, baby. Let's smash this thing. Let's go. We're talking inside job. Someone who's still at the school? Sir, at this time, I'm not able to discuss the details with you, but what I can hey, tell whoa, you... Hey, whoa, whoa! We have some very good people working very hard on this case. I'm sorry, officer, but that just sounds like double talk. We're trying to protect our children. You have to level with us. You know what? Walt is just in, like, no Fs given mode at the moment. He's listening to all this bullcrap at this sort of, like, committee, community meeting right here. Um, and he knows what's going on and they're so clueless that it doesn't even bother him. And he's just like, fuck it. I'm going to try, um, do something with my wife. We are giving you all the information we have. You know what I like to see in this school? Drug sniffing dogs. Yeah. You have dogs and metal detectors and locker searches and strip searches. Our district has strict policy. I heard about this school up in Canada. <laughs> they arrested one of the groundskeepers with drugs. And the next day they found out over half of the students were high on LSD. LSD? What are you going to tell us about LSD? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Cranston's facial expressions are so good. Walt? Yeah. Mr. White is currently on medical leave. But as he's chair of the science department, he's made a very special effort to be with us here. And I'd like to take a moment to thank him for that. Some set funnels uh, so head with a thermometer holder. Oh, 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 where did that come from? And why was it so damn good? Oh. Because it was illegal. Hi guys, on demon time. <laughs> Imagine all the things you could do down here. Yeah, now I know. Remember, you're buying for this fantastic neighborhood. Big lawns and shade trees, walking distance to the country club. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? Seems like you're all out for blood. You are alive. Obviously, you wised up. No, I did go see him. Bullshit. So what, are you selling your house? I got two dudes that turned into raspberry slush and flushed down my toilet. I can't even take a proper dump in there. I mean, the whole damn house has got to be haunted by now. <laughs> you didn't actually go see Tuco. Yeah. That is seventeen five. Your half of the thirty five thousand. Plus, there's an extra fifteen in there. It's all yours. You've earned it. Yeah, it'll be good to have a day that's just about Skyler. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, while I see you've committed to the hair loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel? Uh, okay. Uh, no. Pretty decent, actually. His, his color is better, you know, his energy. And uh, he's even more um, physical. More physical. <laughs> uh, well, sexual. Um, 
frisky, actually. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be a good sign, right? Sure, I'll take that. <laughs> we, <laughs> we move, we move. Does that mean that the chemo is working? Well, realistically, it may just mean that we've got the antiemetics tuned right. The truth is, until Walt's finished this round of chemo and we look at a new PET scan, we just can't say for sure. <laughs> Don Walter. <laughs> Junkyard. Let me guess, you, uh, you picked this place? Look, you don't have to be here for this. Okay, I mean, seriously. I'm okay. These guys look like the biggest amateurs. <laughs> ah, I'm no pussy. I'm good. Uh, hey, what are we doing way the hell out here? What, they close the mall or something? <laughs> Heisenberg, come on, break it out. That's it? That's all you got? We had some production problems. 0.53. I bet you was a player. You told me two pounds, and now you waste my time with these chiclets? Seventeen and a half. Minus and a half for wasting my time. Hey, come on. What? You gonna argue? You got something to say? You doing business? Like a couple little bitches. I want all of it. Why? You didn't get the two pounds. 70 grand. What? What did you say? You like this product. And you want more. Consider it a capital investment. Walt is so ballsy. Go bald, motherfucker. 52 and a half, 25 points big. Wow. Big. Interest weekly. Okay. That's $65,625 with interest. 1.875 pounds. No. Two pounds next Friday and no production problems. Can you handle four pounds? <laughs> That's all, man. Talk is talk. But owing me money? That's bad. Jesse's looking at him like, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? And Walt is... Listen, to Jesse, he's biting off more than he can chew. But listen, Walt's probably thinking to himself, I don't have much long to live, so effort. Let me be ballsy. Let me shoot my shot. Let's try and stretch this guy as much as we can. And I've said this time and time again with this show in terms of the dialogue scenes or the scenes where characters are interacting, talking with other individuals or talking with one another. Um, there's no sort of music that carries or there's no music inserted to, you know, um, I don't know, create sort of some like a, a sense of tension or like melancholy mood, depending on what the tone is for the, uh, the, the conversing scene. Um, it all relies on diegetic sound. And I love that with all the conversations in this show. And I'm pretty sure we're going to get more of that. Whenever characters are conversing with one another, it feels like you're there because there is no insertion of music. There is no non-diegetic sound. It's all sounds emanating from the real world. And that's what I love about it. You know, you hear the cars going in the distance. You hear sort of this like, um, it's sort of not like a ringing sound, but it's like natural noise. And that's what I love about it. It's like you're recording um, or it's like when I'm recording here, it's like the external noise I hear or any noise that I'm like hearing just, uh, I don't know, in the distance or whether it be like construction work. And I love that about it. I feel like it adds to the intensity of the scene even more when you got characters just conversing with one another with no music and it adds to the intensity of it. And I love it. Two thirty-five MM tube furnaces. It's MM millimeter. One seventy millimeter would be fine, but they're hard to come by. So. Forty grams thorium nitrate. Yo, Mr. White, I can't even pronounce half this shit. No, you know what? Count me out. 
All right, I'm leaving town. I'm moving to like Oregon or something. This is Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. Jesse. <laughs> Today is the first day of the rest of your life. What are you doing? This is the first day of the rest of your life, but what kind of life will it be, huh? Will it be a life of, of fear, of, oh no, 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 I can't do this, of never once believing in yourself? I don't know. Listen, these things, we need them. Huh? And only you can get them for us. Okay, it's ready, here you go. Right after the party, your name was changed to Holly. And I believe, Hank, that that was around the time that we took Aunt Marie to the insane asylum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, uh, I dropped her off at the curb, uh, then I uh, married Shania Twain and uh, lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> I love Hank, Daddy! Daddy! Oh. Say hello to your daughter. Oh, uh... Oh, this sucks. This sucks. Holly. I am very proud of you, and uh, I think about you all the time. This this hurts. <laughs> this hurts. This hurts. Wherever you go, whatever you do in life, um, always know that you have a family who loves you very, very much. Cheers. Cheers. This would have sucked Cheers. if he hadn't revealed oh the cancer yet. God. It's so cute. It sucked even more. Oh, Carmen. It's, oh, look. Look at that. <laughs> it's adorable. I love it, Carmen. Thank you. You're so welcome, honey. Thank you. Look at those little feet. <laughs> hey, hey, Walter Jr., my guy. Hey. Oh. And Hank. Oh, what nice wrapping paper. Marie always finds the best wrapping paper. I do. Yeah. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Damn, what a gift. It's it's a a tiara. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Mar Marie, is this some um, white gold and several carats worth of zircons? Oh Marie, you, you spent too much on this. You shouldn't have. You really, really shouldn't. But it's so it's really it's sparkly. <laughs> Did she hustle it? I mean, she hustled the shoes earlier on in the season. You got anything stronger than beer? Can you get to get that beer? Hank, I've already got lung cancer. <laughs> okay. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> I did a little favor for an FBI guy. Now, I was under the impression <clears throat> that these were illegal. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes forbidden fruit tastes the sweetest, doesn't it? <laughs> the Adam and Eve reference. You know, if we were drinking this in 1930, we'd be breaking the law. Another year, we'd be okay. Hmm. Who knows what will be legal next year? <laughs> you mean like pot? I'm just saying it's arbitrary. I mean, friggin' meth used to be legal. Used to sell it over every counter at every pharmacy across America. The guy that came to their senses on that one, huh? <laughs> yeah. You know what I was about to say there? I was going to comment on something. I thought Hank took Walt outside to ask him about something. And I was going to commentate on sort of like a power shift happening. Um, and even though it's only been seven episodes, I was going to liken it to the episode of Grey Matter in episode five, where you had Walt and Skylar, you know, being so nervous about, um, uh, I forgot, Grey and his wife, I believe um opening their presents and it was like sort of mr gray and his wife's moment to shine opening their presents it was their party and i don't know if it was like a slight diss um at walt and skylar or sort of like having shots at them but then you come to find out that skylar had told um gray about walt's condition um and i haven't uploaded episode five yet so i don't know what the comments are saying about that one 
But I was going to say there was sort of a power shift how this episode, now you have sort of Skylar and Walt having their moment. You know, they're opening up the presents. Um, they're not viewing someone else open up the presents. And then I thought it was going to be a situation of Hank asking Walt for help. Whereas in the Grey Matter episode, you had, um, you know, Mr. Grey. I believe it was Grey. I can't remember his name. But sort of, you know, asserting dominance over Walt, asking for a job and sort of um, trying to help him out in life and, you know, lend him a loan with money and things like that. Whereas in this episode, um, Walt is sort of having the higher ground. I don't know if that makes sense what I'm saying here, but you get what I'm trying to say. But I didn't end up being like that because I thought Hank was going to ask something of Walt. Really? You in a sweat lodge. I uh, was thinking about driving up on Friday, coming back Sunday. I mean, if you're okay with it. Well, of course I'm okay with that. Okay. I mean, it gives him a chance to get supplies as well. This retreat. <laughs> sweat lodge? Yeah. I'm already sweating. Help me out. <laughs> <laughs> So why don't we just steal it ourselves? <laughs> yeah? How are we gonna do that? With this. Wait, what? So uh, what's this stuff called again? Thermite. And that will cut through a lock. Because this is supposed to be one <laughs> big ass lock. <laughs> World War II. <laughs> the Germans. I know what thermites are. The biggest in the world. <laughs> From Call of Duty. <laughs> Gustav gun. It weighed a thousand tons. The Gustav was capable of firing a seven ton shell and hitting a target accurately 23 miles away. I mean. <laughs> You could drop bombs on it every day for a month without ever drop a commando. One man with just a bag of this. And he could melt right through four inches of solid steel and destroy that gun forever. Uh, do you happen to have a receipt? Um, no, I don't. It was a gift. Aha, a gift. Mm -hmm. and Mr. Wilson, could you step over here, please? It's because it was hustled. There's no receipt. Mr. Wilson, I'd <laughs> like you to watch this lady while I phone the police. Ma'am, this item is stolen, as I'm sure you know. It Come with me, please. Oh, yes. I intend to press charges. That is embarrassing. I'm not getting enough air back here. I don't think I can breathe. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, no. Give her the I'm Oscar. Give her the yes, Oscar. <laughs> Hi, you've reached Marie. Do the beep thing. Marie, it's Skylar. I just left Zachary's. I need to talk to you immediately. Jesus. I can't take Walt seriously with the ski mask and the glasses on. <laughs> that part of slow it down did you not understand? Talk. God, heavy man, he got it away from me. <laughs> Don't tell me she's on the way to the house now. Or across the road or something. Yo, she who does this real estate agent think she is? Oh, open house. Wow. You think Jesse would know? 
<laughs> Keep the temperature steady at 425 degrees. Four and a half pounds puts us $44,000 a head each. Right on, man. Right on. <laughs> the amount of methylamine that we got last night. We can make four and a half pounds a week for, well, for the foreseeable future. <gasps> Someone's in the yard. Shh. Oh my gosh. If someone goes out to the basement, it's all wraps. <laughs> I mean, this house is haunted. Was there by any chance scheduled for this afternoon an open house? I left her a message, man. It's not my fault. I don't care how you do it. Just keep them out of here. Do you understand? <laughs> now, go. <sighs> Yo, she's married to a cop. She probably thinks she can get away with anything. What's that? Phobia of stealing. I remember Dawn had it in Buffy. I forgot what it was called. There's like a name for a like a, a, a phobia of stealing. Wait, wait. Phobia for stealing. I want to know what it is. Kleptophobia. There we go. Involves the fear of theft. This phobia can actually be used to describe two distinct fears. The first is a fear of being stolen from or robbed. The second fear... Is fear of stealing from someone else? Oh, kleptomania is a mental health disorder that involves repeatedly being unable to resist urges to steal items. Okay, so it's kleptomania. Kleptophobia phobia is the fear of stealing. Okay, kleptomania. Okay, that's what it is. I remember that like, there was an actual word to describe it. You know, you can't duck me forever. What? What does that mean? Does that mean you don't know? That means that I have no idea what the hell you're even talking about. Wow. <laughs> no idea what I'm talking about. The shop. The shop lifting. No idea. You're not going to admit this, are you? I can't really admit to something when I have no knowledge of what it is that I'm admitting. She is not good at hiding this at all. There's been two dead bodies in this house. Plus a full meth lab. <laughs> Excuse me, I'd just like to see the basement. Yeah, let's occupy. It's not a bathroom. Hey! I just want to see the basement. What's the big deal? Yo, you ain't seen the basement, bitch. You got that? Is that sinking in? Now beat it. All you all, house is not for sale. Get that the hell out. That's one way to do it. That's one way to do it. That clock ticking in the background is a recurring sound happening in a lot of scenes in this. Whether it's Walt's house, whether it's Jesse's house. It's there a lot. Hey. Okay, that's Walt's house. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so how was it? Was it a... Uh... An experience? Yeah. Definitely an experience. <laughs> What's that smell? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Ointment. <laughs> Sacred Navajo herbs. <laughs> <laughs> People sometimes 
do things for their families. <laughs> People sometimes do things for their families, and that that justifies stealing. Wow. That must have been some sweat watch. Have you been listening to the words coming out of your mouth? Four and a half pounds, this baby. Shit. This is blue. We use a different chemical process, but it is every bit as pure. Maybe blue, but it's the bomb. <laughs> oh, tight, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, blue, yellow, pink. Whatever, man. Just keep bringing me that. Oh. Four point six. And what did I say, man? This guy can cook. You're all right, man. You're all right. We're going to make a lot of money together. Just remember who you're working for. Oh. What did you say? They got to know that they're working for you. Like, they don't already know that? Are you saying that they're stupid? No, nah, I'm just, I'm just saying. OK. So you're not saying that they're stupid. So I don't understand. Are you saying that I'm stupid? Nah, come on, Tuco. I'm, I'm just saying. No, you're just speaking for me. Like, I ain't got the goddamn sense to speak for myself. <laughs> I love the Is other. That it? Is that what you're doing? Tuco. Tuco. Hey, why don't we all just uh, relax, huh? Heisenberg says, relax. Orale, Holmes. <laughs> I love how the other guy in the I'm background relaxed. is like so unfazed. Oh, damn. <laughs> I think they know who they're working for now. Damn, man, look at that, look! Whew! <sighs> That's messed up. Okay, yeah. Heisenberg! Next week. <laughs> is that guy dead? Or he's just brutally knocked out? I hope he's just brutally knocked out because they're taking him, so... Hey, they got the bag, that's all that matters. <laughs> It didn't involve any of you guys getting hurt. <laughs> hey, that was a fantastic first season, man. That was an absolutely fantastic first season. The character interactions, fantastic. The sound design, fantastic. Um, and even though there wasn't a lot of action, I'm pretty sure... It is teasing a lot of action to come. And if I'm enjoying this show already, just because, um, or just purely based off the character interactions and the premise, I think I'm in, I'm in store for an amazing ride. Um, and yeah, this episode, um, now that I understand that the season was cut short due to Rider Struck, um, this is going to lean perfectly into season two because we've seen already the dealings with Tuco this episode. We've seen how violent it can get at the end of last episode. We've seen how violent it can get at the end of this episode. I'm pretty sure they know who they're working for. Um, but I wonder if that guy speaking out of line, like Tuco's right hand man, left hand man, whatever, if him speaking out of line is sort of a way to say, that there's a bigger fish and Tuco's only a small fish um, in a big pond, um, that there's bigger fish out there in the ocean. I wonder if that guy maybe works with someone else and is put there to keep Tuco in check. I'm not too sure. Probably not. But um, maybe it's like a foreshadowing thing of, uh, you know, there's bigger things to come, bigger players in the game than Tuco. Tuco is just 
a small player in this and um look what a small player can do look how a small player has jesse and walter rattled at the end there already um and imagine what the bigger players can do i cannot wait to see um when more characters get involved and bigger players come into the game and to see how everyone interacts with one another and yeah they've made a lot of money already and they're cooking up good stuff but when their operation is going to expand, Walt is going to have to make bigger sacrifices for his family. He's going to have to lie more. He might not be there a lot. Um, and also, it's going to have to make them, you know, um, work out of the basement, I guess. They need to find a better home to cook or a better uh, base of operations. And I cannot wait to see how this series develops. If season one's got me this hooked, I cannot wait, like I said, to see what's in store for the remainder four seasons let alone i think they're 12 or 13 episode seasons as well so we're in for a ride baby and i hope you guys are there for it as always being your boy Ellie moses i hope you enjoyed my breaking bad season one finale reaction take care god bless peace